Hi, everyone. Welcome to Next, and welcome to the security track at Next. My name is Nimi Reichenberg. I head security operations product marketing here at Google Cloud Security. And in today's session, we're going to take a look at one company's journey to transform their security operations with Google Cloud and Chronicle. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our co-speaker, Mike Oroz, Chief Information Security Officer at Vertiv Corporation. Thank you, Nimi. I'm really glad to be here and walk you through our journey. Excellent. So to get us started, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about Vertiv Corporation. Absolutely. Vertiv is a company that supplies critical infrastructure to most of the Fortune 1000. We're located in approximately 100 countries, and we have almost 24,000 employees worldwide. Excellent. And I believe one of, one of the claims to favor of Vertiv is you guys um, invented the first data center cooling system? That's absolutely right, Nimi. A, a company which started out as Liebert Corporation back in 1965 built that first cooling center AC unit, and that's what was the spearhead for starting Vertiv. Uh, well, data centers sure have come a long way since. They sure have, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. So before we zoom in right on security operations, maybe tell us a little bit about the, you know, the entire security function at Vertiv. What are you in charge of? How is that structured? Yeah, absolutely. I lead many functions that comprise security. It includes identity access management, security operations, security architecture, and product security. Excellent, and maybe talk a little bit about the size of the team, where they're located, you know, the breadth of the, of the team. Sure, our, our team is located in every geographic region. We have teams in Asia, Europe, as well as the US and parts of Latin America. And uh, we're tasked with maintaining, monitoring all our systems to ensure every, everything is running as expected. We're providing assurance to our internal stakeholders and to our customers. Excellent. All right, so let's talk about security operations and talk about some of the challenges that I believe many of you that are watching the sessions are faced with. So I'd like you to um, you know, describe what the situation was like before when it comes to security operations. And we've kind of divided that into three main topics, maybe the first one being the trade-offs that so many people in security and security operations specifically have to deal with. So maybe talk a little about, you know, Data engines, cost, scale, trade-offs. What was that like for you, Edward? You're absolutely right. So trade-offs exist all the time in cybersecurity. It's all about money and speed. Frankly, no one wants to make those decisions, but a common trade-off is what exactly we're going to log, what we're going to monitor, what we can monitor based on what we bought. No one likes to be constrained in those ways. So in many senses, you almost have to kind of pick which blind spots you're, you're willing to live with, right? It, it can be that situation. No one wants to be in a position where they have to decide what they won't monitor just because they can't afford to procure the right system. Got it. And of course, with, with security increasingly becoming a data problem, I think you know, being able to make sure you can ingest and analyze as much data as possible is ultimately key to you know, being able to detect and investigate threats. You're absolutely right, Nimi. Now more than ever, data is prol proliferating. And proliferation of data means you have to analyze more information to get to the basic outcome of an investigation. And with that, you never want to be constrained by a platform that essentially uh, is so complex to operate that you can't get to the end of the investigation. You're always tweaking that platform to get it to work and, and give you the results you need. Great, so I think that's a great segue to the next point that, that we want to discuss, which is complexity, right? Not just, you know, cybersecurity is complex. Um, hopefully, you know, the tools that we use you know, should be as simple as possible, especially given how hard it is to find very skilled and experienced cybersecurity professionals these days. Talk about you know, complexity, how that affected you before you embarked on this journey. You're, that's that's right, Nimi. So uh, it's important to realize a lot of traditional SIM platforms, you have to learn all this complex language and scripting in order just to call data and get the results from your queries. And oftentimes, you have to write queries that might take many hours to execute. No one wants to be in a, a position where you have to sit around and spend most of your time learning how to operate a complex system instead of just picking it up conducting your search, getting results, dispositioning your investigation. All right, and I guess that every 
know, every minute or hour or day that you spend on dealing with that complexity is time that you're not actually spending on Doing protecting the organization, right? Yeah. So uh, you're spending time learning the platform. You can't just pivot if someone leaves the team and moves on to another role somewhere else. You, you actually have to have some downtime and train someone. And that right there takes away from security because you're not committing resources on task. You're spending time doing ancillary tasks like training, which is just superfluous towards your objective of securing an organization or your company. Right. And finally, maybe we can talk a little bit about speed. Uh, you know, speed is everything in cybersecurity. You know, it's not usually not about trying to prevent everything, but how quickly you can detect and respond to threats. So maybe talk about some of the challenges around speed that you encounter. That's right. Well, there's three core elements to any SIM. It's ingest, it's storage, and compute. You can't be constrained in any way, and compute is, is the key ingredient when it comes to executing fast queries and searches and getting results in a timely manner. There were times historically where I would wait until the next day until they get the results of a query. And that's when you're in a crisis situation or a situation where you need to really focus and get results so you can understand what exactly happened. You can't wait that long. It's, it's, not, it's not something you can do. Excellent. So um, obviously, you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of pain, which I think caused you to go out and embark on this journey to better security operations. So maybe you can share, you know, kind of what are some of the things that you were looking to change, you know, how you evaluated different solutions and what were kind of, the, again, the kind of the criteria that you were looking for to start embarking on a, this journey and get to a better state? Well, anyone who goes and buys any security tool will automatically go out and have to compare and contrast across all the solutions on the market. It's the right thing to do is do your due diligence and your homework. And what, a few of the things that we couldn't live with, with or without, we didn't want to make trade-offs. We didn't want to sacrifice uh, you know, the how much we logged and how much data we had to access when conducting an investigation. We didn't want to trade off ease of operations and the fact that we wanted to commit, you know, more people on task of conducting security work and doing security work versus actually uh, being trained on how to use a, a complex tool. That's very different. And we wanted to improve speed. We want to ensure that when we need to investigate something, we don't have to wait around for a couple days to go by just to get to that moment where we can close an investigation. Right. And, and I think with, with, with yeah. trade-offs, what I hear is not only about how much data you can invest and how much compute power you can harness to analyze it, but it's also retention, right? Talk maybe about the importance of retention and going right. back and, and looking back at threats that you know may have been discovered now, but have been around for six, nine months. I think Log4j is a great example of that. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, you can't, just because something made it in the news and it became public, like a security threat, it doesn't mean that that threat hasn't existed for a period of time. And I don't know where I heard the statistic, but it, many incidents and breaches, the attacker has been in your network for many months. And what that means is you need to have more than just a couple months data to investigate when you conduct your investigation. Honestly, I, I want a year. I want a year highly available. I want a year of data where I can just push a button and I can get results. I want to be able to do it myself. I want it to be so that any member of my team can pick up this tool and actually get results just as fast as I can do it myself. And I set the bar pretty low for myself, so. <laughs> Excellent, so maybe tell us a little bit about kind of you know, the, the selection process, you know, the bake-up process before we move into kind of what life looks like after you've made a selection and sure. you know, embarked on this journey. So the key elements that I wanted when we selected this product was I wanted a year retention, highly available. I want unlimited compute resources and we want ease of use where it's no harder to search something on the internet like in a typical search engine. I want it to be the same ease of use for the SIM platform. I'd probably add, you probably want all of that without breaking the bank, I would That's assume. right, I want it all for a low monthly fee. <laughs> Which is, you know, probably as as a, you know, probably even more important in, in this economic yes. climate as as it's, you know, it's been in a while. So that's right. Excellent. So um, let's move on to the current situation. So we talked about, you know, three big goals for this journey: avoid the trade-offs, simplify and ease operations, 
and do everything faster and become more agile. Uh, let's talk about the trade-offs. Maybe you know, share with, with us, with the audience, where you are today in terms of you know, how, how much data were you able to ingest? You know, um, um, you know, how much? How long do you retain it for? Where are you now? With, with, I believe it's been 18 months since you 18 started. 18 months. Study? You're yeah. absolutely right. right. So, uh, when it comes to onboarding with Google and Chronicle, it was a very impressive feat which we accomplished. We were previously logging. Uh, a certain amount and we were constrained by our historical platform and in other roles I've been constrained the exact same way where we had to pick and choose what we wanted to log. We went in a period of three months from zero logs ingested in a Chronicle to over 20 different data sets. And that's amazing. And some of these data sets are very prolific from a logging perspective. We're talking endpoint detection and response software. It's very noisy. That alone in most traditional SIMs might use up all your allocated ingest capability. So that was really great. And we went from day one being able to conduct simple queries, get results immediately. We don't have to wait around for the results to take hours or days to come back to us. So that's something we've increased. We've increased the mean time to detect uh, and decreased our response times uh, we, we're now logging and ingesting over 2,200% more than we did in, in the past. That's pretty mind-boggling. I can also see here you're handling three times, since you're ingesting more data, seeing more things, you're handling three times more security events with the same resources? With the same resources. So we actually have zero people that are tasked with maintaining and keeping Chronicle alive which with most traditional SIMs, you would have to have at least one or two staff members that just work on maintaining the infrastructure, patching it, ensuring it's current. No, it's all hosted in, and updated automatically by Google. So we went from maintaining the platform to now focusing on security work. Excellent, so I think that's a great segue into you know, that goal of easing operations. So zero full-time administrators for, for, for Chronicle SIM, which again, I think is just it's un unbelievable. Shocking. Yeah, but also maybe talk about the ease of use. How, how did you find the ease of use um, of Chronicle? And especially since, you know, getting security experts so hard to find, did that impact how you're able to bring in team members in any way? That's right. Now we have the luxury of bringing in people and training them how to use our SIM. And that pretty much offers the opportunity for many people in other IT roles or people who are new out of school who want to break into cybersecurity and security operations. They can essentially pick up the tool. And if they're familiar with using Google, the Chrome, or any search engine, they can essentially just take uh, a certain element of information like an email address or an IP address and enter that into the search window and then hit execute and boom, you've got results right away. Yeah, I think what, you know, when I hear this from, from customers and, and people who are used to kind of you know, legacy and traditional sims, to hear them say, hey, if you know how to run a Google search, you can get value out of, out of Chronicle. I think that, that again- But you mean I don't have to write a Python script to actually get results? Yeah. That's, you know- and, and to your point that you set the bar very low for yourself, I believe that you yourself even from time to time oh, yeah. go into the system and, and, and conduct investigations. To tell us a little bit about that. It, well, that's great. You know, I mean, I don't have to harass people and bug people just to do work when I can just go in and do it myself. So if I know a task only takes a few minutes to, to conduct or, or execute within Chronicle, I'll just grab something and I'll, I'll search for it myself. I'll figure out what's going on. Then I'll go back and forth with my team and I'll validate it. So it really gets everyone focused more on the action end of security. So easy, even a CISO could use it, right? So How's easy, that? even a CISO <laughs> could use it, you're right. Excellent, um, and, and on the last point, let's talk about agility, right? You want everything to happen faster, if it's from queries to response, uh, again, share, maybe share some of the results. Again, 18 months into, into your journey, can you share some of the you know, agility improvements with us? Yeah, exactly. So not only are we processing more security events, we now have the ability to build trends and do trend analysis to determine how we can optimize systems and use the data from our SIM to reduce security operations investigation times. And that's really important when you're trying to you know, uh, process all that data. So our teams are now processing approximately three times the amount of events they were doing previously. And 
that has really uh, helped us scale. And scaling is what you want to do without increasing your costs. And that's what we've accomplished so far. So 2,200% more data analyzed, 3x the events, 50% faster with no additional resources. That's right. Unbelievable. OK, so you've made a lot of improvements, obviously, over the last 18 months. Uh, but you know, the work uh, in general, and specifically in cybersecurity, is never done. Maybe kind of as you know, final thoughts, share with us a little bit of kind of what's next. What are your plans, um, not just for Chronicle specifically, but for the security operations function, let's say, over the next 12, 18 months? That's it. So over the next 12 to 18 months, our objective is to optimize operations. It's to take what we have now, the basis of a solid security operations function, and we want to enhance and optimize the queries that we run all the time. Our alerting capability, we want to optimize it. We want to eliminate false positives. We want to scale the team more than before. And we want to you know, embed Chronicle in all of our incident response processes, which is something that everyone should be looking to do. Just to optimize and gain the most value as possible out of the SIM platform. That's terrific. Mike, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. And thank you, everybody, for watching. One of the things that we announced at Next is Chronicle Security Operations, which is really our integrated suite of products and capabilities to help you invest, detect, investigate, and respond to threats with the speed, the scale, and the intelligence of Google. If you want to find out more information about Chronicle Security Operations, please visit chronicle.security. You'll have everything up there. And with that, I want to thank you again. I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of next and the rest of the day. Bye-bye. <laughs>